A big round of applause. I'd like to request Priyanka Arge, Cabinet Minister for, Minister for Electronics, ITBT, Rural Development, Panchayat Raj, the Government of Karnataka, to come on stage. Rajdeep Sardesai, our consulting editor, to be speaking extensively on a vision for progressive Karnataka strategies to include and engage the youth. Thanks very much, Priyank and Rajdeep, for joining us. Thank you once again. Uh, welcome everyone to uh, Namaskara. Welcome to uh, Mind Rocks here at Presidency University in Bengaluru, where we are joined by a very special guest. Please uh, give a rousing welcome to our minister here in Karnataka, Priyank Kharge, Cabinet Minister for Electronics, ITBT, Rural Development, and Panchayati Raj. Thank you very much. Uh, 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 Mr. Kharge for joining us here. Uh, I must ask you, when you're before a young audience like this, the first question I ask a lot of politicians is that one of the biggest challenges for any government in any part of the country is employment for the young. This is a young audience who probably wants to know what are the opportunities that lie ahead for them in a state like Karnataka, given that Karnataka also like many states, has a high rate of youth unemployment. So how do you tackle this problem of youth unemployment is what I want to start off with, sir. Oh, well, uh, thank you so much for having me over. And uh, I think that's a question which I get asked very often as a minister for uh, uh, information technology, electronics and biotechnology. But while other states are positioning themselves as a investment destination. Karnataka has taken a different view about it. We are positioning ourselves as a state of our knowledge, mm -hmm. a state for skill. So we are building a solid foundation for education and employable skill sets. Mm -hmm. So we are the first uh, state in the country to set up a advisory council in emerging technologies. We are talking to the industry directly to figure out where each vertical or each sector is headed for the next two decades. We are taking the skill sets that that uh, they will be needing and we are training. We are taking their curriculum and training the youth uh, today. So we are having this bridge of uh, between academia, industry and the government. And for the first time, government has also allowed, uh, besides using their own funds, we are also uh, using CSR and their corporate development fund to ensure that we have the most employable human resource, not only for the state, not only for the nation, but for the world. So skill locally, work globally is the mantra for us. And we are doing uh, extremely well in that. Just, just repeat that mantra again. Skill locally, work globally. Skill locally, work globally, you're saying, Mr. Minister, but for the first 20 years of the of this century, Karnataka dominated, particularly Bengaluru dominated the IT sector. In the last few years, we've seen a city like Hyderabad catch up. In fact, Hyderabad has now put up, uh, uh, which is also a Congress run government, incidentally. So it's not political, but Hyderabad has put up uh, advertisements suggesting that they have got the maximum number of jobs. Uh, in the IT sector or created the maximum number of jobs in the last couple of years. Has Hyderabad somewhere in recent times caught up and even gone ahead of Bengaluru because infrastructure in Bengaluru has become a big challenge? Oh, well, I get this question also a lot. But if you look at the data in IT services, IT service exports, they are over $200 billion behind us. They are growing at a rate of 29%, if I'm not wrong, and we are growing at 27%. In global capability centers, we are number one. We have the highest number of incubators. We have over 15,000 uh, startups registered with the government of uh, Karnataka. We have the highest number of uh, women-led uh, startups. The B2B funding last year for uh, Karnataka was close to around $50 billion. And the next 
closest competitor got close to around 13.5 billion dollars that is delhi not hyderabad but there is healthy competition i mean what's wrong are, are you ready for healthy competition today between a bengaluru hyderabad pune a different parts of the country uh, to perhaps see that the it boom in a way is not just bengaluru centric anymore uh, absolutely i mean we love competition it uh, it keeps us on our toes it uh, uh, makes us think out of the box i mean like i said just take a look at the data we have 45 uh, uh, 45 unicorns coming in from karnataka and 38% of the soon to be unicorns are from karnataka we have uh, the highest venture funding for b2c as well b2b as well we contribute uh, 21% of the national bio economy uh, is contributed by uh, karnataka we are number one in aerospace and defense at 65% we contribute 10% of national electronics uh, manufacturing so name the sector and we are way way ahead of our closest competitor okay this is a young audience and i'm going to ask a question to the audience and then come to you priyank how many of you are not locals from karnataka have come from different parts of the country there you go okay so that's about 50 50% at least here are not from karnataka which brings me to my question on july 15th your cabinet cleared a bill that called for 50% of management jobs and 70% of non management jobs to be reserved for local kannadigas what will you tell those who are not from karnataka they are also indian citizens they also want jobs in karnataka well this is this is what we are talking about look how good the ecosystem of karnataka is all of them are coming here to learn yes and get employed and we are welcoming them and we are helping them not only uh, be uh, uh, employable but also providing them with employment we are we are not saying that they should not be here we are very clear as a government my job is to ensure that the people of karnataka are the most employable and in the process the entire uh, who are uh, comes into the ecosystem are also employable no when you say people of karnataka are you saying very clearly that preference is given to kannadigas if you, is that what your if you see the data if you see the data again most of them are kannadigas already so the bill that you were speaking about is uh, was brought in by the department of uh, labor and they were talking more to do with uh, industries rather than technology uh, clusters mm -hmm. so anyway that is uh, now under uh, you kept it on hold no they have to they, there was no interministerial consultation with that but having said that like you rightly said as uh, we uh, follow the constitution everybody has the right to live and work uh, anywhere but as the government of karnataka and the minister of karnataka it's my job to ensure i create as much employment uh, as possible for our people and we have created these industries we have created this ecosystem for the nation we are one of the few states which are propelling uh, india's economy and so, the collateral uh, benefit is pra is uh, reaped in by every indian There's so you are you are telling it. all the young boys and girls who come from a bihar uttar pradesh rajasthan madhya pradesh any other part welcome to bengaluru we will make you employable we will give you skill sets we will not treat you differently to local kannadigas are you giving them that promise sir sab log baba saheb ambedkar ke bachche hain they can be anywhere in in the country sab log baba saheb ambedkar ke bachche hain yes wo bhi hai main bhi hu and the end of the day if they are coming from uh kashmir or gujarat or uh, assam to karnataka it speaks volumes how progressive our government is it speaks volumes on how good the ecosystem of learning and employment is it speaks volumes on how good our investment is no i take that point i mean it it is good that a state is welcoming for people to come to do, have education but then when it comes to employment suddenly you all put in rules not just karnataka i find more and more states are inward looking is that politics or is that economics is priyank kharge playing politics when he pushes a bill like this or says that uh, because your cabinet also cleared another bill 100% quota for kannadigas in group c and group d jobs i'm just saying is that the pressure of politics that people need to understand you are a karnataka minister you will give preference to kannadigas see this is just not a problem with 
our state or something. Jar uh, uh, Andhra Pradesh had passed a bill similar like this. Tamil Nadu has it. Maharashtra tried it. Everything is uh, Haryana tried it. Everything is under uh, sc uh, judicial uh, scrutiny. Having said that, already C and uh, D group are already 100% over there. In fact, we had a survey where up to 80% of even group A are uh, localized. But having said that, again, I would like to reiterate the point that as a minister for Karnataka, it is my job to ensure that I provide the best employable skills for skill sets for my people. The schemes are meant for uh, the government schemes, the state government schemes are meant for our people. And we will ensure that uh, we uh, more than a reservation, they deserve uh, be better skills. And we will ensure that we provide an environment to uh, make our people more uh, employable. Like I said earlier, skill locally, work globally. I cannot tell our people not to go to Chicago and work. I cannot tell my people not to go to Singapore and work. But I'm going to ensure that uh, the people who are learning in Karnataka, who are uh, from Karnataka, are the most employable human resource in the world. Because as you, you mentioned, Baba Sahib Ambedkar. Ambedkar did not make a distinction in the constitution on the base of region. He didn't say there has to be reservation for a particular region. So to that extent, Ambedkar saw everyone as he had reservations. Reservations were also supposed to be for a finite period of time for those who are the victims of social injustice over the years. He did not say that Karnataka will have only reservation for Kannadigas or Maharashtra will have for Maharashtrans. To that extent, you have slightly departed from Dr. Ambedkar when you push this bill. Absolutely not. I wouldn't say that. As a state government, we have this thing. See, as a reservation, like you rightly said, is for the economically weaker sections, for the socially deprived sections, yes. In the private sector also, if you want to bring it, we are okay with, uh, with that. Let the government of India decide wh what it wants to do. As a state government, there are my limitations which I have to work around with. There's a limited budget, there's a limited uh, uh, policy navigation I can do in a federal structure. And we're just doing that. Like I said, again, we are not... Are here in perpetuity that no one can touch reservations, that even the private sector... Even IT and BT companies should have reservations or are you very clear that should be purely on what is to be seen as merit? Well, see, uh, the reservation thing which you say, uh, uh, the call room which you said should have been uh, finite was with hope that uh, the society would realize the bains of it. And there would be uh, Prabhud Bharat someday, not just a Samrud Bharat. But that Prabhud Bharat is still not is still a work in progress, and that's why it's taken. It's been 75 years, and even now you see what is happening. I mean, you you understand India more than me, and you see how the socially disempowered are treated. So the idea is to get them the economic empower, the social empowerment, and uh, whatever it takes uh, to do that, we should do it. One of the challenges, uh, Mr. Minister, is to skill people. It's one thing to give them a good education and certainly Karnataka has been on education ahead of the curve when it comes to information technology. But what about the skill sets to make them competitive? People are looking for the best possible skill sets. You've got a program Nipuna Karnataka. Is that going to become a basis for a skilling of people? People need the top skills to compete globally, as you said. How effective is that going to be? Well, uh, the scheme that you just mentioned is a new scheme, Nipuna Karnataka. Nipuna means highly effective, highly skilled, precision uh, uh, skilled uh, people. And uh, this is different from other programs because we are directly engaging with the corporates and with the industry vertical. We are going to uh, the most minute details. So if a company wants uh, digital forensic experts, we train them in digital forensic uh, uh, curriculum. If they want data scientists, we do that. If somebody wants uh, uh, people trained in uh, quantum computing, we help them with that. So it's just not about getting skill sets in packaging or in uh, menial jobs, but also skill sets to the highest uh, level. And this is happening with with the not only with industries. We have uh, uh, tie up. Uh, we have got a tie up with around 31. Uh, countries called the Global Innovation Alliance with my department. So we are doing skill corridors. So we are uh, one of the top five artificial intelligence cities uh, in the world. So we are uh, AI skilling is a huge thing. 
so we have tied up with uh, we are tying up with san francisco for that we are tying up with incubation we are tying up with san francisco with that we are tying up with incubation uh, centers across the globe we are talking with uh, dusseldorf we are talking with uh, australia for uh, uh, skill corridors so it is we skill them in bangalore but they can work anywhere the, the reason i ask and there are two questions one you mentioned artificial intelligence many believe that you will have to create that large corpus of people who are trained in artificial intelligence the fear of course is artificial intelligence could result in a loss of jobs does that worry you do you believe that you could have a situation where actually jobs will become scarce because of the focus on artificial intelligence is that a worry that's question number 1 whenever there is a new technology that comes in and catches the imagination of people there is always a knee jerk reaction of uh, loss of jobs Uh, this happened during the industrial revolution this happened during the uh, two th- early 2000s as well but more jobs are being created in newer sectors i mean just uh, look at uh, a few years back uh, if somebody would be doing animation they would wonder why he is doing animation but now animation is a degree how many people uh, knew about uh, all these uh, so would you encourage the young technology? move into those areas would you encourage as an it bt minister encourage the young audience here look at animation look at uh, artificial I, I, i'm suggesting they look at anything that emerging technologies whether it's in it bt manufacturing industrial processing industry 4.0 cyber security this is where the next uh, the uh, next jobs are going to be created the the gap between academia and industry is going to be filled by programs like uh, nipuna uh you keep mentioning bengaluru or maybe i kept mentioning bengaluru and you know you are a large state of karnataka one of the concerns is there is so much of focus on bengaluru the city itself is exploding how are you going to spread and evangelize what you are saying to other parts of karnataka there are you need to somewhere spread these skills these uh, 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 these employable qualities to other cities other towns of karnataka would you concede that that's a big challenge for you going ahead absolutely i mean we are not concentrating only in bengaluru of course bengaluru is the anchor it is the pride when we go uh, pitching for investments uh, across the globe people recognize bengaluru bengaluru is the anchor and from bengaluru we we have uh, blossomed across the state you will be quite surprised mysuru it exports is close to around 3000 crores mangaluru it exports is close to around 2000 odd crores we have uh, the mysuru cluster has close to around 450 uh, startups registered with us we have in the mangaluru in the hubli dharwad belgavi clusters we have close to around 460 startups and in your mangaluru coastal belt we have close to around 300 uh, startups and we have funded close to around 983 startups so far from the government of karnataka out of which 38% of them are from tier 2 and tier 1 cities so even our electronic manufacturing clusters the four clusters that we speak about only one is just outside bengaluru and the rest of them are beyond bengaluru itself so we are encouraging people to invest uh, in uh, belgavi kalburgi your uh, uh, mysuru mangaluru so this is where it is all and we are having sector specific uh, focus here so mangaluru has uh, a fintech focus uh, mysuru has a global capabilities plug and play focus so we are uh, moving and uh, the numbers speak for themselves i know this is strictly not within your domain as minister but i'm told that your your government is finally trying to resolve bengaluru's traffic challenge also by using ai you have some traffic lights that are now coming up through ai i am told which everyone is excited about because finally we want bengaluru's traffic is your biggest challenge everyone who comes to bengaluru says lovely weather terrible traffic well uh the flip side of the ai is also people are getting a lot of challenges <laughs> from through the traffic light uh, cameras but yes uh see uh the whether it's bengaluru or any other city that is growing these challenges are always uh, consistent i uh, and uh, you cannot say that uh, it all you cannot wish them away because we are uh growing so rapidly like you pointed out earlier the migration to the city is huge and policies are always playing catch up i was in delhi day before yesterday for the uh, semiconductor india i i was wading through i was wading through 3 feet of uh, water. water 
it took me close to what was a 45 minute drive uh, took me close to around two and a half hours but unfortunately nobody complained there only when it comes to bangalore it uh, people are a little vocal because we are a government that is listening and we are a government that is willing to listen learn adapt and take corrective measures okay i don't want to create a bangalore versus delhi debate uh, no, i can take up even bangalore versus hyderabad bangalore versus chennai bangalore versus mumbai as well on traffic on traffic on infrastructure on human resource on government policies okay uh, you know priyank kharge uh, you've also been as IT minister very tough on anyone who spreads fake news. You've been, your government is, uh, the BJP says you file FIRs against their IT cell. You want to arrest Amit Malviya. You put up FIRs against him for fake news. Is this a personal battle or do you believe that this whole issue of fake news needs to be tackled in a serious manner with an architecture created to ensure that fake news cannot spread? So, yeah. can I... Be object, be direct. You are before a young audience. Be honest. No, no, I am always honest and direct. Uh, well, if you expect to put up face, uh, fake news and misinformation and get away with it, it is not going to happen in Karnataka. You do anything else wherever you want. But here, you cannot misinformation, malinformation, uh, disinformation and fake news will not work here. If you, if you see the quantum of fake news that is coming up in Karnataka is drastically reduced. And we are not doing anything that is uh, subverting democracy. We are not doing anything that is subverting uh, the freedom of speech. We are merely following the laws of the land. And okay, forget me as an IT minister who say the Supreme uh, Court, the CJI has said that fake news is a is the biggest threat to democracy. The chief election commission during his uh, uh, press briefing uh, for uh, during the parliament election said that three M's money, muscle and misinformation is the biggest threat to democracy. Modi ji himself comes out and says misinformation should be curbed. So and we are just doing our job and for doing my job, why is the BJP so itna ghabra kyu rahe hain? Itna ghabra rahe hain kyunki wo keh rahe ki if a congress person spread misinformation, will you throw him in jail? If a BJP person throws misinformation, you put an FIR. Tomorrow, if a Congress person uh, also spread misinformation, will you put them absolutely. in jail? Absolutely. Show me one play, one misinformation that any congressman has actually done. The, these people run factories. These people run factories of misinformation, fake news, and then they expect to get away after uh, maligning governments, maligning individuals, mal maligning government policies. You criticize us. You critically uh, uh, come up to us and uh, uh, criticize the government, critically uh, pull, up, pull us up with respect to any policies. We are okay with that. But okay. If you are going to spread fake news, I'm sorry. This okay. Is, not is, the it, place. is it fake news, uh, Mr. Minister, that there may be a chief ministerial change in Karnataka? Absolutely. You see, all the flashes in Delhi are Sitaramaya Sarkara. Is Sitaramaya ji going to remain chief minister? Is Priyank Kharge? wanting to become chief minister is dk shivkumar wanting to be chief minister your party seems to have a lot of chief ministerial candidates is there any possibility of a chief ministerial ch I, I change this is a question i'll have to ask you back because these are things that you should not be done for trps this is definitely not this is definitely not this is definitely no you're saying no question of absolutely, chief minister absolutely because well, the there is government. this whole ever since this so-called Muda scam, Mysore Urban Development Authority scam has come and Mr. Sidharamaya's name has come up. A governor has given a sanction for prosecution. I know that the matter is in court. But is there is the Congress now thinking about a change in leadership? Absolutely not. The entire cabinet, the entire Congress legislative party is behind uh, Sidharamaya ji. There is, these, are, these rumors come up from I don't know where they crop up. Uh, so they come up from your own party. Your own party people are your worst enemies sometimes. I can understand if somebody from the party is saying it. Who, show me one person in the party who said this. Show me one MLA, one MLC, one cabinet minister who said this. Nobody has said it. BJP wale bol rahe. BJP ka baat sunte. Aap hamari baat nahi sunte. Aap. Uh, <laughs> okay. And more importantly, they just look at this entire way the thing has played out. Because you, call, you said so-called Muda scam. Just have a look at that, how uh, the governor is being misused here in Karnataka. Uh, 
there is this is a standard operating procedure of the bjp look at it in delhi look at it in uh, jharkhand west bengal tamil nadu kerala and karnataka wherever the bjp is weak they use the they use cbi cbi it ed if that doesn't work they use the governor's office and this is what is happening in karnataka so you are saying the governor's office is being misused i absolutely not only the office the governor also okay you are that's a very senior serious charge you are making that the governor and the governor's office is being misused in the sidaramaiah case but dal mein kuch to kala hoga ya puri dal kali hai that every time i come to karnataka whether it's the bjp government or congress government i hear about corruption just as you have lovely weather you also seem to have corruption in the air again i would like to uh, ask show me one case where there is there has where the bjp is uh, actually done it's all hit and run we have given uh, all the we have set up commissions we have set up uh, uh, committees headed by uh, judges if there is anything that the bjp has they can go and give it to the commissions why they have not given instead of going and giving a, a document a hard uh, hard evidence to these commissions they come and sit in the press without any document okay so I... what is the point of coming to the press and talking instead of going to the commission and giving document submit it to court as if we are running away from a legal battle i must ask you this priyank kharge i your father is the congress president malikarjun kharge and i don't know how many of this young audience knows the story of malikarjun kharge malikarjun kharge's father used to work as a laborer it correct me if i'm wrong uh, in a textile factory or a, in in a factory malikarjun kharge through sheer effort uh, came up from a small dalit home and uh, eventually has become the uh the president of the congress party uh it's a great story sir your father's story from where he came and and his his life struggle would you concede it's much easier for you somewhere i'm saying children of famous family surnames find it easier than your father your father is the real person who worked hard priyank kharge benefits from the kharge surname absolutely i would not dig, uh, deny that i mean uh, the struggles of my grandfather was different the struggles of my father are different and my struggles are different conveniently sometimes what happens uh, is that they also the people tend to forget that uh, even i have be i put in 20 25 years already and uh, we get elected not selected i'm not coming through back door through a nomination i am st standing for an election i lost my first election i lost an organizational election i have come through the students union so, somehow that gets diluted and quite naturally so and what is interesting is uh, these questions are usually asked only for congress people not for bjp people uh, when uh, jesha who is not held a bat in his life can become bcci chairman priyank kharge cannot become an mla priyank kharge cannot become minister vijendra with no qualification becomes the bjp president this is not me speaking uh, this is bjp people speaking that is okay anurag thakur ji who is now a minister he has played ranji you you follow ranji so well he played ranji match only one ranji match only one inning and then he became uh, the uh, himachal pradesh ka, uh, cricket ka, uh, uh, captain association uh, president uh, yes How he was that? also the captain he in that one match scored uh, zero one match one uh, seven balls zero runs but captain ban jate hain usko nahi puchte aap de usko bhi puchhenge sir are maine to kabhi suna nahi bhai nahi nahi mera ye mera ye ki hai maine char election lada hai do chunav organization youth congress se chun ke aaya hu फिर भी हमको ये क्वेश्चन है बीजेपी को क्वेश्चन नहीं आता है जेडीएस को नहीं आता है आप में नहीं होता है ये सब नहीं द रीजन आई एम आस्किंग इन कर्नाटक एंड पर्टिकुलर आई सी लॉट्स ऑफ सन्स एंड डॉटर्स सन इन लॉज डॉटर इन लॉज डॉटर्स एवरीवन गेटिंग यू नो बिकमिंग एमएलए एमपी ऑल इन द फैमिली लॉट्स ऑफ यंग पीपल मे वॉन्ट टू ज्वाइन पॉलिटिक्स कैन दे ज्वाइन पॉलिटिक्स टूडे एंड सक्सीड even if they don't have a family surname they should in fact there uh, there are a lot of success stories you look at uh, will you encourage this uh, young absolutely, audience to join sir, but will they be able to do it because they already all of you have filled up all the positions how can a young sir, person come in mentorship is required in any, any any field whether it is media or whether it is politics just follow the right people or automatically they will be able to this thing it, follow the right ideology follow the right party follow the right people why will they not be encouraged sir 
there are there are so many people in our party who have come from gram panchayat and are today in the cabinet whether it is uh, sidrama asa whether it is uh, dk shukumar saab every both of them have come from uh, the mandal level okay i want you to give one therefore final message mind rocks the young if you were to give them one recipe for success in life what is your life mantra that you would give this young audience if they want to succeed in life not just in politics but in life sir well uh, there is no shortcuts for uh, success and uh, there is no template also for a success the only thing you do need to do is keep working hard keep trying keep uh, trying to learn unlearn relearn and adapt that is the only way i think uh, is uh, the way to success the day you stop learning the day you stop listening i think that will be the last day of progress uh, whether it's in any field that you are and my only request to the youngsters over here is the nation has the advantage of two d's right now one is democracy and one is demography it is our responsibility and your responsibility as well to preserve this democ uh, democracy so that you reap the demography dividend that you all have right now and i think uh, we are poised to, to do that the, as a nation and uh, i would really encourage all of you over here to just safeguard these two things democracy and demography and i don't see why india will not be leading the next uh, 50 years i want to ask you though your father could not become chief minister of karnataka is the son hoping to do what the father could not do and perhaps become the first dalit chief minister of your state or uh, the first chief minister uh, uh, do you hope to become chief minister what your father could not achieve like i said sir there is no shortcuts Let so you are not ruling I, it i have i have the party has given me a very specific role of ensuring that i create a great ecosystem for uh, uh, skilling and for employment and for investments as it minister they have given me a very specific task of ensuring i do a great job in rural development and panchayat raj and uh, i think i should just focus on that right now okay so we won't put a headline priyank kharge says does not rule out becoming a future chief minister of karnataka that's how fake news no, travels uh, either way <laughs> aapka trp badega mera ghatega <laughs> okay ladies and gentlemen to have a candid young minister come and speak, so frankly please give a warm welcome please give a warm thank you to priyank kharge thank you very much mr kharge for joining us here on mind rocks at presidency university thank, thank you. you thank you so much thank you Uh, I request Mr. Priya Kage and Rajdeep to stay on stage, please. Inviting on stage, we have Presidency University's Chairman Nisar Ahmed, Dr. Nisar Ahmed. If we could have you on stage, please. Thank you very much Priyank for that uh, thoroughly engaging honest opinions thank you Nisar Ahmed for joining us on stage